In this video, we're going to focus on how we can start to filter our date or a chart based on a drop down here. And as you can see here, we're going to select this and then it will show us today's date and then 30 days backwards or one month backwards. And of course, we could do it here three months. Then we go from today's date three months back or an entire year. And of course, if I refresh, it will reset it back from starting of 2020 to all the way to the end of 2022. So let's start to look how we can do this. So let's start to look how to filter a chart by multiple month with a drop down or select option in Chart.js. To do this, first of all, we need to get a boiler template, which you can find on Chart.js3.com getting started this specific link, which you can find as well in the description box. So once you're on here, scroll down and copy this entire chunk of code here. If you want to understand this boiler template, make sure you watch this video here that explains it all. Just paste it all in there, cut this out, and then I will just put this in here. Title, save, refresh. There we are. So next what I want to do is I want to maximize the size of the chart. And we're just going to say here, chart box, 80%, save, refresh. All right, there we are. So now what I want to do is I need to have what we call the date adapter because we are going to work with the dates. So to do that, we have to go to chartjs.org and in here, we're going to select ecosystem. And once you're on here, we're going to search for the date adapters. So we're going to select on the adapter link. And then in here, we have these two options here. I'm going to use Loxon because I'm going to use some built-in features from them. And I know them slightly more better than date FNS. Although if you select them, one of these two, don't select moments. Moment has been deprecated. So we're going to use Loxon and the team of Moment move to Loxon to continue this. So we're going to scroll down here and we're going to grab these two JavaScript files, which is the Loxon at number two. But of course, there's also a number three version of this already. And then we have here the Charges Adapter Loxon. These two files are necessary. So I'm going to copy them, paste them in here and put, put the proper indentation there. If I save this, refresh, nothing happens yet, but we can now start to work with the dates. To do this, I'm going to work here and I'm going to just get some random dates here, for example, 2021, and make sure that this, of course, is a string value. Then I'm going to say here, January 1. Next, what I want to do is exactly the same, but now we'll just grab here 2022. And finally, I have another one here. Um, uh, let's put in this one here on 20 October, which is currently, and that should be more than sufficient for this uh, example. So if I save this now, refresh, of course, nothing happens yet because we didn't activate the X scale or convert the scale here into a time scale. So I'm going to say X and put a comma here, and I'm going to say here the uh, type will be time comma and I'm going to say time because now we're allowed to use this time object because we specified here and then in here we're going to uh, specify the unit and the unit oh that will be every single day that we want to show save this refresh all right interesting it does not work here unit day time unit day um let's see here what's going on all right, sorry, my bad. As you can see here, I'm working on the X scale and the X scale should be here at the bottom, but I did a tiny mistake on here, the data. So this should not be, so I'm going to just correct this quickly. This is my bad. It should be in the labels, of course, because then it is correct. And here we just put in the numbers six, three, and nine. Let's put them back, save, refresh. All right, as you can see, by default, we get the whole spectrum from our starting to ending what Chart.js is able to see here. But I don't want this. I want to see, for example, the current year. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say comma. I'm going to say minimum. And the minimum value will be 2022-0101. And then I will say here maximum will be, let's get the current date now. So we're going to say a new date. And that should be it. So if I do this uh, like that, that should be already fine. As you can see here, this is eventually 2021, 2022. And uh, what it should be shown if I grab another one, let's see if I can just find something that will, will make it show. So I'm going to put this on, let's put this on 18, save. 
All right, interesting. Uh, oh, of course, sorry. 2022 needs to be this. There we are. 18, and I guess now officially it's 20. So probably 19 should be shown as well. There we are. But 20 itself, the 20th is not being shown as of now. Anyway, doesn't matter, but that's basically the date of today. However, depending on the time zone, it's being calculated. I didn't reset the time zone, so maybe it shows you slightly different. However, what is more important is that we have now, we have our one year showing or whatever we have here from today all the way back to the end of this year or beginning of the year. But what I want to do now is create a simple button or not even a button, a drop down or select. So I'm going to say yes, select. And in this select, we have the option. And then the option will have some values here. And I will just put in three single values here. One for one month only. So we're going to show one month from today, one month back. And then what we have more is, uh, let's put them all in here. We say three for three months. And this one is 12 for 12 months. And that's it. So we have this option. And then what I want to say here is, on change so when we change this value we want to filter chart and then refer to this whatever this would be but it would be the entire element but we can then extract the value attribute from this which is basically this one here that we're going to grab whatever we selected anyway I'm going to copy this and if i just refresh here we have this button here now let's fix the function so i'm going to scroll down here create a function put in this and here we could say here the month all right so we get this month here and if I copy this and do a console log we should be able to see the entire element but we don't want the entire element however just let me show you if I select one of these options you can see here we get the full element we don't want that we want the value attribute so we say dot value refresh here do this again there we are and I guess maybe here this one month should maybe reset to uh, select one something like that maybe here uh, value select or something like that we put this blank please select all right so now we have that blank and then we can select these options all right looks absolutely phenomenal of course we could do very much more but this is just javascript so i, I will not go deep into that so now what I want to do is I want to calculate because I get the value of one month. So first of all, what I want to do here is to start to change the values. And what are the values that I want to uh, have? Well, I want to access this here, but to, go, to do this, I need to go from my chart all the way into the config, to the options, scales, X, and then min and max. So it's one or the other. So I'm going to say here, my chart dot uh, config dot options dot um, we said the scales I uh, yes that is the scales dot x dot minimum value and the minimum value would be something here what that is well we have to calculate this the maximum value in this case I will assume the maximum value will just be the current day max but I'll just put it in here and then, uh, well, we have it here as well, so it doesn't matter, but I'll just use here the, um, the Luxon functionality so we know how to use them as well. So we're going to say here, down here, Luxon.DateTime.Now. And basically what we're doing here is this is the command of Luxon. Then you have the date and time indicating to start with something and get the now. And then what I want, which is basically the current day and time maybe it's even useful to show you what these are so we have a full understanding of them so let's show you this and of course if uh, you can always uh, fast forward in case you already know this so what I want to do here is to select something and if I select something by default we get here the information you can see it's a locks on date and time through and it has a whole date object it says the timestamp the year the month the day hour and minute this is for us very important because now we can deduct how many days over, sorry, how many months, how many years we could calculate and deduct that. So what we're going to do here then is basically we're going to say here, uh, 
what I want to do is to deduct one month or did, uh, add one month. Well, in this case, let's say we're going to deduct one month. We're going to say a dot plus. And a dot plus here, which is basically an object as well, we're going to put in the month. And if you really understand this part here, we're basically trying to get into here. And then we're going to say we're going to plus something, the month we want to target. So we want to plus the month. And with plus, you can also deduct that. How do you deduct the plus of the month? Well, it's quite simple. All we need to do is we're going to say a negative, let's say one. And then we deduct it. But if you want to do plus, we can do plus one, or it's like this, number one. So let's do a negative one. And then once we did that, we have the date and time. And then what we could do as well is we have to convert this into a two ISO, which means International Standard Organization of the date. All right. Then we have this. If I save this, refresh. Now if I select this, you can see here now it is nine, which stands for September. But today is October. So that will mean that it starts to understand these negatives. So if you understand this part, we probably understand that we can grab this entire value where we get the numbers. And just put it in here. We can say here, because we're going to expect always from the from this month or from today, going back three months, one month or one year. So it's always a negative value for us. So then you will see that this will work very nicely. So if I do here 12 months, you'll see here now it's 2021 instead of 2022. If I do one month, we'll see here 2022. All right, so this works now, it confirms all. All we need to do here is we're going to grab this. Nope. That's where well, we can cut that out. That's fine. And then in the max value, well, we don't want to do it in the max value, but we do it in the min value. Why the min? Because that's a starting point. So the starting point would be whatever the selected, so from today minus whatever months we selected. And then we have here the max value that could be just, I guess, the now. And we can just say here to the international standard organization of date. All right, we've got this here. Once you do this, final option is my chart dot update. Save. So let's remove all of this. Save, refresh, and let's test this now. So we have this here. Then I will say I want to go one month. And you can see here when I do that, it starts to, to show up and clear it nicely. And if I go here three months, there you are. We're going back to July. And if I do one year, we're going back from current 20 October all the way back. To make sure that this is really working, we could also say here, I'm just going to put this in here. I'm just putting here 2023. So we are way ahead of time. You can see here now, and if I select something in one month only, it will get the month of today or the date of today. And then from there again, back and you can see here, October 20. So this is being confirmed and this works nicely. And that's basically how you can filter with a select or a drop down here on just month segments. So if you enjoyed this video and maybe you want instead of month, maybe you want to select by day or starting day and ending day, which is completely different. In that case, I'm going to recommend you this one here where you have a video on how to filter dates in charges where we have a drop down with the date calendar that we can select starting date and a ending date and filter and even reset if necessary. So that's another video I highly recommend as well.